What's going on, my PT peeps, my Walking Dead family, my fighters? I'm One Eye Bry, also known as PT. I don't know if I'm waking or blinking, but I'm definitely thinking about the Walking Dead season 11, episode 13 and 14. Well, mainly 14. Spoiler warning for all things Walking Dead. Well, is Negan the best part of the series now? I think so. To me, the best episodes of part two have been episode 9, 13, and 14, and Negan's been involved with them. We haven't seen episode 15 or 16 just yet, so we'll have to see if they're even better. And dun dun dun, dun Leah returned. So again, Leah was involved in episode 9, and also 14 at the very end. We kind of all can agree that we wanted Daryl to take out Sebastian, but not so fast. Negan's been a very busy boy getting married to Annie and also having a baby on the way. This is kind of laughable, but it's kind of like, yeah, is Herschel going to take out Negan? At some point, well, we have a spoiler Negan Maggie show on the way is Herschel involved Herschel Negan now they get to find out the truth while Herschel gets to find out the truth about Negan now we get to see that Lance is involved with yet another thing he knows about the Sebastian stuff with the money Carol is going to be involved with Lance and I like that dynamic for sure well the episode starts with Toby on top of the roof they set up a radio a long distance radio so Toby can talk with Lance, and I did like the Toby character. He came and went, goodbye Toby. Hopefully you know the reference to that too. But we see that Lance is called and he is an alligator or a crocodile. See you in a while, crocodile. Later gator, but Lance is involved with Toby, obviously. They don't find the guns because the Riverbend people do not have the guns. We found out Leah did at the very end, but Toby was gone, like I said. So it started with this group of four, and I kind of had to laugh because we heard kind of gun shouting, yelling, screaming, and Maggie was like, hmm, go ahead, you go check it out. We're gonna go this way. So Lydia and Elijah go down the hallway and they don't interact with anybody that we see at least, but it's Elijah and Lydia. Is there a romance brewing there? Better watch out guys. But ultimately we see Maggie and Aaron walking down the hallway to get stuff done. We see a police station, and we're gonna talk about this later on in the episode, but we see Daryl and Carol setting up a lunch, I guess date, right? But it's interesting that Carol has a red dress on. We know that Carol is safe and we know that Daryl is safe, but I gotta mention it because that's what I do. This is the sassy police chief person that's like, Dixon, you coming in? Daryl, Carol set up a lunch date that they never have because Daryl doesn't get to go to lunch. He's there doing a job for Sebastian, pretty annoying character. It's kind of laughable that Daryl is a cop. They're playing like this is the precinct, this is the police station, Daryl and Rosita are cops. Daryl being a police officer is kind of laughable. Well, when in doubt, give it to Daryl. So we see Daryl and Rosita as Rosita's like, oh, uh, I'm gonna eat some of the donut too. And the sassy police chief is like, Daryl or Dixon, Espinosa, together. They're gonna check out patrol section D. Sebastian and his girlfriend come in. They talk and brag a little bit here as Rosita and Daryl finish the donuts. You can clearly see that Sebastian is just getting what he wants and he's a punk and I can't wait to, he better get taken out, that's all I can say. But they love to keep these punks around. Jared, Sebastian, gonna be around for way too long. Sebastian is bragging like, hey, when you see Brodders, uh, my heart rate goes down when yours goes up. And I was like, hey, yeah, whatever you say, buddy, yep. And it's kind of funny that the two guys laugh, like no one is buying that Sebastian is this awesome badass dude. Stop trying so hard, Rosita laughs, and that's for sure. But you don't wanna cross Sebastian. You have to play the game with him and make him look good, which is kind of funny and laughable. But here we see a police station number five. So are there really four more or even more than five? These two guys, I don't know what's Rosita and some guy. I don't remember his name. I don't care because he's shot by Mercer, which Mercer is awesome, by the way. And I do like the dynamic with Daryl and Rosita and Mercer for sure. But we see Maggie and Aaron go into 3D, 3D, anyone, right? But we see them go into a room and check out and it's empty. And we know that Annie, and her people know the building better than anybody so they can hide. They sneak up on Maggie and Aaron and then Elijah sneaks up on Annie. So it's like, I gotcha, nope, now I gotcha. And it's pretty cool to see that Negan is the guy that comes in and calms the situation down. He's like, hey everybody, that's Maggie, that's Aaron. What's up Elijah? Hey Lydia, how are you? And he's kind of the person that's calming things down. We knew this was going to happen. Lydia is kind of shocked to see Negan. I guess she thought he was killed off. But we knew that Negan was going to be kept alive after the war because of the Whisper War and Alpha. And Maggie's hugging another person. She's hugging everybody this season. But Negan is the middle ground for stuff. And Maggie hates that. That's for sure. And that's okay. I understand that. 
Annie, some people are worried that Maggie is going to kill Annie. I don't see that. Now I feel Annie is going to die, but will it be after she gives birth? Will she lose the child? Is it fitting that Negan is going to lose Annie? Because if you think about it, that's his sixth wife. We're gonna find out that Annie and Negan are married, but how much time has passed? Negan's been a very busy boy. Maggie's had this face on the entire season. We know the dynamic with her and Negan. It's rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. And I do like the character of Annie. Are you okay, Annie? Hope you get the reference. Then we see Sebastian telling Rosita and Daryl that they have to go into this building or into this house, a prepper panic room to get some money. And it's crazy to think that Sebastian has sent out all these people to whatever house it is here to get money that's really meaningless. Like money in a zombie apocalypse is pointless. It doesn't kill walkers, it doesn't grow food, you can't eat it, you can't drink it, and that haircut is annoying. But ultimately Daryl and Rosita step up and you know, when they were like, we're not gonna do it. And I like the idea that Daryl and Rosita are not being pushovers. They're like, nah, we ain't gonna do that. And then Sebastian threatens Daryl and Rosita's kids. And I'm really glad that Daryl is not like, okay, we have to do it, we have to do it, no. He's like, I'm gonna take you out. You threaten our kids again, you're done. And I love that. Then we see the Walker Guts trick again and again and yet again. And to me, the Walker stuff here was kind of like, should this Walker be so all up in their face here? Is it Rosita or Daryl? I can't tell. But the Walker stuff here was kind of annoying. Like the continuity of stuff is a little all over the place with the Walkers, but they get into the house, they see fresh blood. So to me, it's made to represent another fact that they've done this before. People have been here to try to get the money. Why don't they just go to banks or some other way to go that way where this house is not surrounded by walkers and why are there so many walkers? But they get to the touchpad here to open up the panic room and they can't. So we see that Daryl and Rosita make contact with a woman named April. And it's interesting because the woman April, there is an April on the list that Kelly and Connie had. Is it the same woman here? We don't know this woman's last name, but April, and if you see from the bottom, one, two, three, four from the bottom, April, Kelly, is that the same person? Could be. And Negan and Lydia and Elijah and, and Gabe and Aaron are just hanging out and talking. And he's like, you're married? Look at the wedding ring, he's married. How'd you get the wedding ring, right? He's been so busy over the time. I don't know how much time has passed since he left Maggie, but Lydia's like, you're married? Then we see a Commonwealth soldier bring in Herschel, and he was a stowaway in the truck. Bad parenting, Maggie, but I guess Herschel was playing the Carl stay in the house card, but Negan saves Herschel, and dun da 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 there we go. Herschel is saved by Negan, Maggie's worst nightmare. Her worst enemy saves her child. Negan is not messing around. He takes out the Commonwealth Trooper and it's pretty great. Then we see that Annie, because we find out that Annie takes out ginger root, which is good for nausea, upset stomach. Commonly when you're pregnant, she's eating that. Maggie finds out that Annie, are you okay? Are you okay, Annie? Hope you get the reference. And then Negan calls and Annie says, you're a smooth criminal, Negan. No, none of that happens, but ultimately we find out that Annie is pregnant at least 12 weeks and Negan is the father. So Negan's been a busy guy throughout the apocalypse. Maggie is pissed off, especially, or she's upset and worried that Herschel is there and Negan is in charge of her son, her worst nightmare. But I like the dialogue with Annie and Maggie and you know, saying that Negan hasn't forgotten. And you see that Annie is sticking up for her husband and it's kind of good to see. We get to see Negan's side and Annie's side and Maggie's side, but Negan cares about Hersh and he cares about kids. He's like, anything happens to him, they gotta go through him first, it's gotta happen to him first. Now the dynamic with Negan and Herschel, we kind of thought it would eventually happen and here it happened. We got to see that Herschel figured out that Negan is the bad man and that Maggie hates him because of what he did. He puts two and two together that a bad man killed his dad and Negan's the bad man. So Herschel's very smart. So Herschel holding the gun is kind of funny, kind of cute, kind of laughable, but you really think this guy is gonna take out Negan? I'm really glad this didn't happen, but that's what happens with the Walking Dead universe. But Herschel Negan is this foreshadowing for down the road in the spinoff? We'll have to see. Now, Daryl figures out how to jumpstart the generators or the power or whatever here, and Daryl's pretty smart, evidently. He's kind of like Morgan. When in doubt, give it to Daryl. Give it to Morgan. He'll figure it out. And we know how the saying goes, when in doubt, give it to Daryl. So Daryl figures out, I guess, to complete the circuit with the pliers, 
and that's what happened here. But either way, when he's figuring this out, walkers come in and come in and keep coming. And why are there so many walkers around the house? I'm not sure if it's the alarm or the generator or what. It would have been great if it was explained a little bit more. And the flight sequence was pretty great. I'm not sure why Daryl was taking off his armor. Was it getting stuck? in the walkers, I guess that's what it was because he would fight a walker and I guess he hits it with his forearm thing and then he takes it off like, yeah, enough of this. There's a baseball bat, looks kind of fake. What is a fake bat? But it would have been great if it was a wooden baseball bat, a la shout out to Negan, but it was a metal baseball bat that he takes out the walkers and it's a pretty awesome scene. Again, he takes some walkers out, drops some armor, and we know that Darrow does not want to wear the armor and we'll have to see if he continues to wear it down the road, but it would have been great to have some protection, but I guess Darrow doesn't like it. And we see that the power comes back on, Rosita punches the number in, and then they get into the safe room, the panic room. Darrow opening the safe with the crowbar is kind of funny. The alarm going off is annoying, like, oh, I gotta cut off the circuit breaker or whatever she said. It was funny because the alarm's going off and April's like, ah, my ears, my ears. And wouldn't the alarm be tripped from before? but I don't know. Either way, it attracts a bunch of walkers. They come into the house and Rosita is playing with that while Daryl is like, ding, 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 ding. And I'm guessing they already worked on the safe prior. That's why Daryl could get in there. Rosita just doesn't rip the wire or cut the wire. She smashes it with her helmet. It was just overly dramatic for what it was, but they eventually get into the safe and there's so much money in there. Like, I don't know why they're putting so much emphasis on the money. Would Dara go back for the briefcase that had the money in it? You know, that could be useful at the Commonwealth because you could have money. But when Rosita smashes the thing with her helmet, it's like overkill, like too much. But Daryl goes in there, finds the money and whatever else is in there, and he puts it in a bag and they're about to go out. But there's more and more walkers coming there. April's freaking out like she's doing overacting, but ultimately we see Rosita and Daryl barricading themselves inside the room to really, I thought the door might lock again. So I was like, don't do that, don't do that. But ultimately they put the dresser cabinet thing in front of the door and they wait. As they're waiting, we get to hear gunshots, which is like, okay, who is this? And Daryl and Rosita are saved. April is just overacting. I mean, I guess she's a regular person. Does she have red hair, by the way? She doesn't make it as we thought. She's a red shirt, so that's what happens on this show. But as Rosita, Daryl, and April are watching, we hear gunfire and a bunch of walkers are being taken out. Did more and more get into the room because Rosita and Daryl are saved by Mercer and Carol, or did they get into the house? Because they would have had Mercer and Carol would have had to clear the way to get to the room and into the house. So they would have had to kill a bunch of walkers, but they decide to do the guts trick yet again. So they kill a walker, drag it in and put the guts all over them. I love Mercer's line, like you going to let us in. And Mercer is great. I think Mercer is awesome for the show. And again, I would love to see a princess Mercer show a Tales of the Walking Dead episode, something for this character. We need more Mercer in the Walking Dead universe and with the main show ending, it kind of sucks that he may only be in a couple more episodes. Well, you know, the remaining episodes, but Carol comes to save the day with Mercer. They do the guts trick. Carol has nothing on her face and neither does Daryl or oh, Daryl does Rosita or Mercer, but April does and she's the one that actually dies. So you get to see that there's no real guts on them. So the guts trick is working, but not working. But again, it's the continuity that is kind of lackluster at times. But as they're walking slowly through the house and the walkers are there, April's face is kind of a given like, oh, I don't know about this. It would be kind of scary though, to be walking among the dead. And then we see that her armor strap gets caught on a walker, which they kind of foreshadowed something may happen with the armor earlier with Daryl or Rosita coming towards the house. But the walkers go towards April and devour April. It reminds me a lot of Sam when she starts freaking out like Sam and Jesse in season six. A lot of reused stuff here. Rosita kills a walker, Mercer kills a walker, Daryl, Carol, they kill a bunch of walkers. What was kind of annoying is when Mercer, you know, killed a walker. We only had so many rounds left in his rifle and so did Carol, but to see the bayonet at the end, that's a pretty badass weapon. Carol takes out a bunch of walkers and Carol being Carol, Daryl loves his knives and takes out the walkers pretty easily and Rosita does as well. So we don't lose any main people here. We lose newcomer characters like Toby, April and the other Commonwealth soldiers. But again, as Carol and everybody are taking out walkers, Mercer runs out of rounds, which he would, but you have a bayonet at the end of the rifle at least stab one of the walkers. But he's like, he kicks a walker away and then he drops his rifle and takes out the ax that's attached to him. 
Now the axe is a great weapon, but why wouldn't you use the bayonet at the end of the rifle? Am I overthinking it? Am I nitpicking? I don't know, but I saw something and that really bothered me. I'm like, no, you have the bayonet. It's the point on the rifle. Use it, use it, use it. Kill the walker, do it, you know, do what you got around you. If you didn't have the axe, you would probably use it, but Mercer takes out the walkers and everybody's okay. It seemed like a big threat, but it kind of wasn't for our group, as it would be pretty weak if one of the main characters got bit and died. We'll have to see if that happens later on in the series. But we're going to see Rosita look as laying on the ground. Is she gutted? Like, are those her guts or her own or other? As there's guts right there, but are those hers? Rosita takes out April, and that's the end of April. It should have been last name O'Neill. Shout out to Ninja Turtles. But everybody leaves the house with the money, and then we'll see that later on. So back to the river bend. So we see these two ladies walking down a hallway, and then Toby and his Commonwealth troopers kill a person at the river bend as they're looking at the dead body. Maggie and Annie go into 5G, like the cell service. We see that Toby and the Kamala troopers still don't have the information, no guns. But as Annie and Maggie come out of the room, I kept thinking about the radio. Like, do the Kamala troopers have their own radios? Like, would you hear the transmission that Maggie's like, we have a plan, we have a plan, everyone to the roof. Maybe she did it on purpose so they would go there. But we see Toby and the Kamala troopers go into a room and nobody's there. Is that a teddy bear girl bear? It's a teddy bear, but is it a shout out to the first episode with the teddy bear girl? But we see Toby sees some tracks on the ground and it makes him check it out. He looks at the Crescent Falls bourbon bottle foreshadowing that he's going to take a fall. We see that Toby is about to find Negan and the other people, but there's a noise or something that draws their attention away. The classic, you know, movie show thing. But then we see Aaron and Father Gabriel go to the roof. No one's there. We see Toby and the Kamala troopers come behind them with the Desert Eagle aimed at Aaron. Aaron tosses his gun away. And really one of them should have died here, but they didn't. The only one that dies is Toby. We see Elijah come from out of nowhere. And what kind of bothered me is that there's two Commonwealth troopers here and he takes out one. The other Commonwealth trooper doesn't even fire a shot at all. So you see the guy or girl that Elijah's gonna take out here, the one on the other side should have got to Elijah. Toby is punched in the face by Aaron. He drops the gun. He calls for backup, come to the roof. Nobody comes to his savior or rescue. We see that Aaron picks up the Desert Eagle and he's not messing around because Toby was gonna shoot him. Probably would have shot him again. Bop, 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 gone. Toby falls off the roof, pretty awesome stuff. And I have to say that Toby kind of reminded me of Simon a lot. He was a character that we liked. He's kind of a psycho. Well, he is a psycho. Falling off the roof, sweet death, because he falls onto the ground, and all the walkers here are just in hibernate mode, sleep mode. And they're like, mmm, lunch. Oh, man, thank you for the food. Let's crawl over here. They're not walkers, they're crawlers, right? Because they have broken legs and appendages. So they crawl over to Toby and start to munch on Toby. So Toby is shot fallen off the roof, broken bones, and then he's devoured by walkers. It's a pretty brutal death. But again, I would love to have seen Toby earlier on. He would have been good for the show. And then we see our group bring the money back to the Commonwealth troopers that are working for Sebastian. Again, I don't care about their names because they're killed off in the same episode that we get to meet them. Yet again, they bring people in, red shirts that are killed off in the same episode. Mercer, I'm glad, takes them out because they're punks. They don't care about anybody but Sebastian who's paying them. And it's crazy to think that they sacrificed like 30 people so Sebastian get money. Sebastian did nothing besides order people to go do what they had to do. Mercer said, you gotta pay them. Daryl doesn't want to, but Mercer says, that's a battle you ain't gonna win because Sebastian has a lot of power there. He's a punk, but you gotta play the game. Mercer says, I'm gonna take the money in, they won't search me. It would've been kind of cool if he kept the bag for himself, but either way, I think there's three bags on there, maybe kept some of the money for himself, you never know. But Sebastian comes in, he's like, hey, we did it, guys, we did it. You didn't do anything, Daryl, Rosita, Carol, Mercer, almost got killed, so this guy get some money and have his lavish lifestyle. It's pretty annoying, but that's the point of the character. Mercer's like, yeah, those guys didn't make it. I like the idea that Mercer is going to join our group more and more and more because you know he doesn't like Sebastian. His mom doesn't even like him. Nobody likes Sebastian. Sebastian takes half of the money here in his hands, which is a small amount that's in the bags, and gives some to Daryl and Rosita like he did a good job. He paid them. 
Rosita doesn't like Sebastian. Again, nobody likes Sebastian, not even probably Sebastian's girlfriend. We know that Pamela Milton does not like Sebastian. He's a punk, but that's the point of the character. And Sebastian leaves with his money. Like, do you really pay stuff with money there? It doesn't make any sense to me, but that's the way it is in the Commonwealth, and that's the game we gotta play. So we see Lance, and it's 622 on the clock, an abacus next to the clock. Not sure what they're showing you, like the old and the new, but then we see Lance talking on the radio, trying to figure out what's going on. He's not getting through because it's not there. We see the Dwayne Jones bourbon. Also, the green apple to me stands out. Is it like forbidden fruit, the forbidden apple? What's the green symbolism? Carol comes in and talks with Lance, and we know that Carol is connected with Lance, and it's a cool dynamic to see. I like Carol basically being the Lance. They're very similar, right? Lance blends in, does what he has to do to survive, and Carol does the same thing. But again, we see this green apple point blank period, right in your face. What is it there? We also see a bowl of red apples on the table. Warning, warning, watch out, Lance. Danger, danger, Carol. But I don't think Carol's gonna die. Lance probably will, but we see that on the table. The fact that Lance likes to talk to Carol, we'll have to see what can be done with these two. Does Carol take Lance out? We see at the end that Negan talks with Herschel. Herschel doesn't say anything to Negan. He's mean, mugging him the entire time. Maggie comes in, is like, what did he say to you? Herschel doesn't even answer Maggie. So I have to see what's the dynamic with Herschel and Maggie. And I do like the idea that Negan said, go with your mom, rebuild the community, step it up, do what you gotta do there in a couple years. We'll talk about it. We have some unfinished business. But what does that mean for the spinoff series with Maggie and Negan, Annie, Herschel, Negan's baby? We'll have to see how it goes down. And again, I do not feel like Maggie is going to kill Annie. That would just be, nobody wants to see that, that's for sure. It's not gonna bring Glenn back. It's not gonna do anything for the Maggie character, but Maggie, Aaron, and Father Gabriel are talking. What are they gonna do? Are they gonna bring everyone to Hilltop? Are they going to, you know, what's gonna happen in the next couple episodes? Can't wait to find out. But I do like the idea that they answered who took the guns and the supplies from the wagon, supply drop. Two weeks ago, we see a horse just chilling there. We see the Commonwealth troopers killed. So I have to think, that these Commonwealth troopers we know suck, right? They're terrible. We know that Leah is a mercenary. She's a badass chick, but she's one person. There was at least a couple of different Commonwealth troopers there. I think three, I believe, right? But we get to see Leah kill that Commonwealth trooper and she's back. What does it mean going forward? I don't know, can't wait to find out. Like, share, subscribe, support the PT channel any way that you can. Post your comments below, stay safe, and as always, tell them, Daryl. Yeah, we